This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we're going to be piping buttercream cherry blossoms. The videos are broken down into steps, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. So let's start making colors for our cherry blossoms. We're using American Style Buttercream and two liquid gel colors today. We're using some violet and some red red. And I've got just a touch of each out here on my lid with a toothpick. And we're gonna start with our lightest color, which is gonna be a very light pink. So we're just gonna use a speck of red. Important note, you could just use white. Putting a little color in it helps it show up a little better on camera. So we're gonna do two-tone pink petals, but you could definitely do white and light pink. So even one less color to create. So I'm just taking, oh, that was my purple. Just a little speck of my red red just a tiny tiny bit just to add a little bit of color to this buttercream and you'll notice if you use things like red red or tulip red in place of using your actual pink food coloring you'll get a slightly different tone to the pinks that you create so it's a nice way to kind of help change things up so that just gives us a nice soft light pink so for our second color, we're going to make a darker shade of pink. So I've just got a little bit of my buttercream down in the bowl, and I'm just going to use just a little bit bigger specks of that red red just to give it a little more color and depth so that the two colors pop out against each other. There you see, we have a nice medium tone pink. For my third color, I'm gonna make a slightly darker shade and I'm gonna add a little purple into it. So it's just gonna have a little bit of a burgundy feel to it. And I'm gonna use this for my little stamens. So I want it to be a little bit darker than those other colors and have just a little bit of a different feel. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of that purple. We'll mix it around and check it out. You can see that's giving my pink a little bit more of a touch of a mauve feel, which is nice. I just want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to add a little more color. I'm just gonna keep adding until I'm happy with it. I think just a little hint more, and it'll be a nice shade against my other two colors of pink. Beautiful. We're gonna use two bags and three tips for this little flower. So we've got one bag fitted directly with our number 61. So that is a curved petal tip. And I have it striped with my light pink and my medium pink. You'll notice the medium pink is towards the fat end of the tip. So that's gonna give us darker insides to those petals and lighter outside edges. My little kind of medium tone burgundy color is in a bag with a coupler. And to start with, I have it fitted with a 101 can be any small straight petal tip. And I'm gonna change that up later and put on a number one tip. So just a small round tip. You could use either a one or a two. Anything tiny will do. So let's talk about the techniques that we're gonna to use to create our cherry blossoms. For our petals, we're gonna use a number 61 tip. So it's a curved petal tip. And we're going to have it laying kind of flat on the surface, which means that that outside edge is just gonna be rocked up a little bit. So it's gonna give us a slightly cupped petal. Back of the bag is gonna be off towards the back and we're gonna draw out, spin, and then pull back like we normally would, but we're gonna try and pull it out a little bit and then to a point before we turn the nail and spin 
and pull it back towards itself. So that's gonna give us a petal that is slightly fatter in the middle and has tiny bit of a point or kind of more of the idea of a point. It doesn't actually need to be pointed. We just want it to kind of taper off towards the end a little bit. With our 101, we're going to hold it flat on the nail and just spin to make a disc. This is just giving us a little something for our petals to rest on, make sure they're all connected and to make our flowers a little more stable. And then finally, we'll use our number one to create both dots and little spikes. So for dots, we're just doing little tiny dots. So right above the surface, just hover there, squeeze and finish them off cleanly. And for spikes, pull away as you're piping and that's just going to give us some nice little stamens there in the middle so you can see it's just nice tiny petite little dots it's going to give us the idea of little bit stamens with a little bit of pollen on the end so to build our cherry blossom with the techniques that we just talked about we're first going to pipe a flat disc so i'm just going to hold that tip flat against the surface, fat in towards the middle, skinny end out, and spin. And that's just gonna give us a little disc to pipe on top of, and give our petals a little bit of support, make sure they're all connected together underneath, that'll make them easier to transfer to our cakes later on. Next, we're gonna pipe our petals. This one is a five petal flower, so if you need to, mark your parchment paper and flip it over before you start piping so you know exactly where to put those petals. But it's easy to think of like a stick figure drawing where you have a head, two arms, and two legs. So that's a great little kind of visualization for that spacing. So we're gonna make these nice little cupped petals that taper on the end. And if you want to, you can take a little toothpick and either after you've just piped them or when they're a little bit cold and firm, you can just use the toothpick to kind of notch the end and give it that characteristic little bit, um, kind of like triangle shape there at the end of those petals that you think of cherry blossoms having. So it has that kind of little knock at the end of those petals. And then finally, we're gonna add stamens and little dots to give it the idea of those nice little centers because they often have a lot of little stamens in the centers and they have very pronounced uh, little balls on the end for the pollen. So it's a great little look. I usually just do some little dots all the way around and then pull some stamens in the middle to give it that idea of those nice full centers. So we're getting ready to pipe our cherry blossoms since we've talked about the techniques we're gonna use. And I've marked my parchment, head, arms, and legs with Sharpie to give myself a nice little guide. And when I flip that over, you can see I have a nice idea of where to put my petals so they're kind of equally spaced. I'm gonna start with my darker color and my 101, and I'm just gonna lay it flat and in the center and give it a nice little spin. This is just a good little area. It's gonna make sure all my petals are attached <clears throat> because of the style I'm doing. And then I have a nice little base that my flowers are on that's gonna help make them easy to transfer. Next, I'm gonna grab my curved petal tip, my number 61, and I'm gonna start right here in the middle. Back of the bag is kind of going out, right? We're kind of in that lay flat position, but remember that means that um, curved skinny end is up off the surface. And I'm just gonna nice and slowly draw out, get it to a peak and pull back in. And you can see that gives me a nice little cupped petal, nice and delicate. And I'm just gonna repeat that for each of my petals. Just take your time, line up. and make sure you're in a nice spot. And that way, if you have some space between the petals, it doesn't matter because we've got that disc in there in the center, keeping them all firmly attached together. And especially with those nice curved petal tips that have those really skinny edges, it's nice to go nice and slow. It'll keep it from feathering too much. And if you want to, at this stage, it's a good point to just go in and use your toothpick, create a little notch on the end of each of those petals that'll give it that characteristic kind of W style indent. If it's too soft, 
or you're scared to do it while it's warm, you can always let them chill up and it'll be easier to manipulate when it's cold. But usually just taking the toothpick and just gently passing it through that end is enough to do that for you. Then I'm going to change the tip on my darker color bag. So that we're using our number one. And I'm just gonna put a few small dots close to the center on each of my petals. Just nice and tiny. And if you want your stamens to stand out more, you can make the color even darker. I just like mine to be just a little bit darker so it's a nice subtle effect. And then pull some little stamens. And I like them so they're kind of hanging out over the petals. Totally fine if some of them flop over and some in the center. And that gives me a nice flower with those beautiful little stamens in the middle. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.